next we'd like to talk briefly just about Obamacare and not on the medical provision sides of it, but on the tax provisions. Um, there's five significant taxes that were instituted to help pay for Obamacare. The most important one, and the one I talk about most extensively, is the net investment income tax. So for high income, people with the income of over 200000 or 250 if you're married, there is now a 3.8% tax on all income over those limits. Um, there are a few exceptions to it. The most common exception to it is the exception for that to the extent it's income derived from an active trade or business. Um, but this applies to all interest income, all dividend income, all capital gain income, all distributive income from pass-through entities, unless you meet the definition of an active trade or business. Uh, that definition is very similar to the 469 definition for the definition of a passive activity. In fact, it's, it's the inverse. In fact, the way the provision was written, it specifically uh, taxes if it is a passive activity. Um, that is a huge tax. Uh, it's planned to raise over $123 billion uh, over a 10-year period. Um, and uh, it, it does change effectively you know, our, our individual rates for, for marginal tax payers was not 35 to going to 39.6, it was going to 40.6, and then it's going with another 3.8% over and above that. So you're going to have a significant number of taxpayers that are going to be effectively at a 44% um, effective marginal rate um, for their taxes. Likewise, they have increased payroll taxes to the extent you make more than 200000 or 250 if you're married. Um, the Medicare tax is currently 2.9%. That will effectively increase for the high income taxpayers to 3.8%. Uh, so what you're, basically what you'll see here is an equalization between earned income and net investment income. So what will happen is, it, to the extent it's not earned income and it's passive, it's only subject to the 3.8% tax. And in most cases, if you're active, it's going to be defined as earned income to you, and you're going to be taxed at 3.8%. Uh, so either way, you're going to have this additional surtax of 3.8%. There is some huge... Um, planning opportunities there uh, that can avoid it. Um, the most common method would be here is if you're if you're in an S corporate form of business, uh, in an S corp form of business, and you're active, as long as you pay your reasonable salaries and pay your your employment taxes on those reasonable salaries, the excess distributive income from your S corp will not be subject to self-employment taxes, nor will it be subject to uh, the new net investment income tax. Um, we think that that same exception applies to pass-throughs through LLCs. Um, we, um, it's contrary to a proposed reg. That reg was proposed in 1997. It has never become final because it's been so controversial um, and it's so inconsistent with, because it gives a deference to LLCs, I mean, a, a penalty to LLCs as compared to S-Corps, that's never been put in place. We're not required to follow proposed regs, but it was an interpretive reg, so it does reflect the IRS's position. Um, but we haven't seen them enforce it aggressively, but we're uncertain what's going to happen. Um, going forward now that we have a net investment income tax and it clearly makes a difference between the two. Um, I think everybody's heard about the 2.3% medical device tax for devices produced in the United States at the sale in the United States. It wouldn't apply to 
a medical device that was purchased in Europe and brought to the United States, but it applies if you buy it from a, um, a, a United States manufacturer in the United States. Um, I think we all know that that's just a pass-through. Um, you know, it will be reflected into the cost of capital. I don't think it will be absorbed by the medical providers uh, overall. Um, and that's about a $2 billion tax per year for the next 10 years. Um, we've also drastically increased the limits on medical um, expense deductions. Um, and in particular, by increasing the limits, that is something that actually applies to lower income and, and middle income um, taxpayers, as well as a medical device tax, obviously. And then finally, your flexible spending limits. Um, historically, there's been no limit on flexible spending accounts. Uh, most corporations self-imposed a limitation of $5,000. A lot of people think that was a provision that limited $5,000, but that was just the, <coughs> the industry sort of established. But now we do have a provision that limits it to $2,500. Um, and I personally think that medical savings accounts and flexible spending accounts were one of the greatest inventions we had because one of our biggest problems in the medical industry is that the buyer of the service is not the payer of that. Um, and in this case, you can put it in a situation where the buyer of the service was paying it and, and, and would be reasonable um, in their selection and purchase of services. Um, these are all taxes. Um, they, they total over $250 billion um, uh, that have come into play. And I, I was shocked by the lack of debate that was discussed on this, at least pointing out that we're not going back to pre-push tax cuts. We're going back to pre-push tax cuts plus a whole set of other taxes and regimes taxation. 